Good morning, second graders. Today is Tuesday, May 26th. I hope you all had a wonderful long weekend full of fun and relaxation. It was nice to have that extra day, wasn't it? This week starts our ninth week of distance learning. My goodness, we've been doing this for a long time. I miss each and every one of you so much. This will be our last week of learning for our must-dos for reading and math. But I still want you to be watching my video every day because we are going to be reading some wonderful stories. We're going to be completing our memory books and we're going to be finishing our chapter on telling time. And then next week, there's still three days of school left because we don't get out of school till June 3rd. So I will have videos each day. So stay tuned. Keep tuning in and watching um, because I want to make every last day count. And we only have seven days left together. So keep watching those videos um, because I wanna just make every minute count. All right, today for our matrix, May 26th to May 29th. Yesterday was Memorial Day, just like we said. So today we're going to be, for reading, um, watching the video as I read Ruby the Copycat, and we are gonna be completing a memory book page. Okay, so this is our story this week or today I should say, Ruby the Copycat, and it's by Peggy Rathman. And what's so cool about that is that, I don't know if you remember, but Peggy Rathman was the same author that wrote Officer Buckle and Gloria. So I didn't even know that when I was getting ready for the video today, I thought, hey, that sounds familiar. And sure enough, that's the same author. So that was really cool. And something else that's really cool about her is that she's from Minnesota. So that means I like her even better. All right, so our story is Ruby the Copycat. And we are going to, just like we would at school, this is my chart paper, okay? I'm gonna talk about the genre, and the genre is realistic fiction, and that means the type of story that we're reading is not true, it's a made-up a made up story, but it has elements in there that could happen in real life. So there's parts of the story that you will think, oh, that could happen in real life, you're right. That's what makes it realistic fiction. Okay, and the setting, that means where the story takes place. You should know that by now, don't you? The setting is at school, and that's where most of the story takes place, is at school. There's some vocabulary words I wanna go over with you that you can listen for. The first one is coincidence. And a coincidence is when two or more things happen at the same time without planning it. Now, there's a time, there's actually several times um, during the school year that Mrs. Mickelson and I would dress alike, and that was always a coincidence. We never planned it. How many of you remember those times during breakfast and we'd put our arms around each other and show you that we were dressed alike? That was always funny, wasn't it? That was a coincidence, because it's not like we called each other and said, hey, you wanna wear the same thing? That would be silly, wouldn't it? But it was a coincidence, so that's a great example of that word. Murmured is the next word saying something in a low and quiet voice. Maybe you don't want somebody to hear it and you're kind of mumbling underneath your breath. That's what murmured means. And then the next one is recited, reading or saying something out loud in front of other people. So if you had to read something out loud in front of other people, that would be you reciting something. And then last word I really want you to focus on is unique because we're gonna talk about that on our memory book page too. And unique, is being only one of its kind, unlike anything else. So if you're like the only one of its kind, that means you're unique. And each one of you is unique. And we're gonna talk about that later with our memory book page, okay? While you read the story, well, first of all, the focus today is on character traits. So we're gonna talk about how each character is a little different and what makes them them. And while you read today, I want you to think about the message that the author is trying to, to tell us by writing about copycats. Okay, so what is her message in writing about copycats? And that's what we're gonna talk about at the end of the story. So here's the cover. And you can look and see, I bet you can decide which one of those girls is Ruby. One is Ruby and the other character is Angela. And hopefully you knew that Ruby was this one because she looks like she's copying this girl, Angela. Because if you look closely at the picture, you can see that she pinned those flowers on her dress. So that makes it look like she's trying to copy this girl's dress, doesn't it? Okay, and if you guess that, 
You were correct, because that's Ruby and this is Angela. So I'll read the blurb on the back. Ruby is a copycat. On the day Angela wears a red bow in her hair, Ruby returns from lunch wearing a red bow in her hair too. Fortunately, Ruby has a very perceptive teacher who helps Ruby discover her own creative resources, which keep Ruby literally jumping for joy. Okay, so we're gonna find out what this story is all about. So be thinking about the message that the author wants you to know by writing about copycats. Monday was Ruby's first day in Miss Hart's class. Class, this is Ruby, announced Miss Hart. Ruby, you may use the empty desk behind Angela. Angela is the girl with the pretty red bow in her hair. Angela smiled at Ruby. Ruby smiled at Angela's bow and tiptoed to her seat. Here's the picture. Now look at Ruby. What does it kind of tell you about Ruby, that picture? Maybe you notice that it looks like she's shy. Maybe she's kind of scared to come into class. Remember, she's the new girl, so that's always kind of scary, isn't it? I hope everyone had a pleasant weekend, said Miss Hart. Does anyone have something to share? I was the flower girl at my sister's wedding, said Angela. That's exciting, said Miss Hart. There's Angela. And look, Ruby's sitting behind her. Ruby raised her hand halfway. I was the flower girl at my sister's wedding too. What a coincidence, said Miss Hart. There's that word. Angela turned and smiled at Ruby. Ruby smiled at the top of Angela's head. Class, please take out your reading books, said Miss Hart. And there's the picture. At lunchtime, Ruby hopped all the way home on one foot. When Ruby came back to school, she was wearing a red bow in her hair. She slid into her seat behind Angela. I like your bow, whispered Angela. I like yours too, whispered Ruby. Class, please take out your math books, said Miss Hart. So what do you think she did when she hopped home? You said she got a red bow. You were right. On Tuesday morning, Angela wore a sweater with daisies on it. At lunchtime, Ruby hopped home sideways. What's gonna happen when she comes back? When Ruby came back to school after lunch, she was wearing a sweater with daisies on it. I like your sweater, whispered Angela. I like yours too, whispered Ruby. Man, that's like the cover. On Wednesday, Angela wore a hand-painted t-shirt with matching sneakers. After lunch, Ruby hopped back to school wearing a hand-painted t-shirt with matching sneakers. Why are you sitting like that? whispered Angela. Wet paint, said Ruby. So what did she do? She went home at lunch and painted a t-shirt in her shoes so that she could match Angela and copy her. On Thursday morning during sharing time, Angela modeled the flower girl dress that she wore at her sister's wedding. Ruby modeled her flower girl dress too, right after lunch. Angela didn't whisper anything. Okay, so now Angela's starting to realize that Ruby's just copying her. They aren't really coincidences, are they? That's different if you're copying. That's not a coincidence, is it? By coincidence, on Friday morning, both girls wore a red and lavender striped dress. At lunchtime, Angela raced home. Okay, so this day there actually was a coincidence. They didn't, Ruby didn't copy her. They just ap actually happened to both wear the same thing. So what, did, what do you think Angela's gonna do when she races home at lunch? Because she's not liking this business of them matching all the time and Ruby copying her, is she? When Angela came back to school, she was wearing black. She didn't like to copy. And look at her face. She looks kind of upset, doesn't she? She's kind of getting tired of Ruby copying her. On Friday afternoon, Miss Hart asked everyone to write a short poem. Who would like to read first? Asked Miss Hart. Angela raised her hand. She stood by her desk and read, I had a cat I could not see because it stayed in back of me. 
It was a very loyal pet. It's sad we never really met. That was very good, said Miss Hart. Now who's next? Miss Hart looked around the room. Ruby? So make a prediction about Ruby's poem. And I bet you can predict that Ruby's going to copy Angela's poem. Ruby stood and recited slowly, I had a nice pet who I never met because it always stayed behind me and I'm sure it was a cat too. Okay, now look at Angela. She puts her head down. Ruby smiled at the back of Angela's head. Someone whispered. Ruby sat down. What a coincidence, murmured Mrs. Hart. Okay, so now even Mrs. Hart is catching on that Ruby keeps copying Angela, doesn't she? She doesn't look very happy about that either because I think she knows that it's upsetting Angela. Angela scribbled something on a piece of paper. She passed it to Ruby. The note said, you copied me. I'm telling Miss Hart. P.S. I hate your hair that way. Ruby buried her chin in the collar of her blouse. A big tear rolled down her nose and plopped onto the note. When the bell rang, Miss Hart sent everyone home except Ruby. That wasn't very nice of Angela to say that she hated her hair, but I can see that she might be upset that Ruby kept copying her. Miss Hart closed the door of the schoolroom and sat on the edge of Ruby's desk. Ruby, dear, she said gently, you don't need to copy everything Angela does. You can be anything you want to be, but be Ruby first. I like Ruby. That was a nice way for Mrs. Hart to tell her that, wasn't it? Miss Hart smiled at Ruby. Ruby smiled at Miss Hart's beautiful polished fingernails. Have a nice weekend, said Miss Hart. Have a nice weekend, said Ruby. Make another prediction about what you think Ruby's going to do next. Let's see if you're right. On Monday morning, Miss Hart said, I hope everyone had a pleasant weekend. I did. I went to the opera. Miss Hart looked around the room. Does anyone else have something to share? Ruby waved her hand. Glued to every finger was a pink plastic fingernail. So if you guessed she was going to copy your fingernails, you were right. I went to the opera too, said Ruby. She did not, whispered Angela. Now, do you think Ruby really went to the opera? I don't think so. I think she was copying Miss Hart. Miss Hart folded her hands and looked very serious. Ruby, dear, said Miss Hart gently. Did you do anything else this weekend? Sometimes I've called her Mrs. Hart. I'm sorry, she's Miss Hart. Ruby peeled off a fingernail. I hopped, said Ruby. Remember at the beginning of the story how she would hop home at lunch? The class giggled. Ruby's ears turned red. But I did. I hopped around the picnic table 10 times. Ruby looked around the room. Watch. Ruby sprang from her desk. She hopped forward. She hopped backward. She hopped sideways with both eyes shut. There she's hopping because that's something that she's good at and she likes to do it. The class cheered and clapped their hands to the beat of Ruby's feet. Ruby was the best hopper that they had ever seen. Miss Hart turned on the tape player and said, follow the leader, do the Ruby hop. So Ruby led the class around the room while everyone copied her. They thought what she was doing was pretty cool, so they wanted to see if they could be like her this time. And at noon, Ruby and Angela hopped home for lunch. And then they became friends again, right? Because Angela liked Ruby when she would stop copying her, when she was her own self and didn't try to be Angela all the time, right? So that's an awesome story. What do you think the message was that the author was trying to tell us about copycats? Hopefully you knew that it's important to just be you. You don't have to copy other people to be liked. Each one of you has special talents and unique qualities about you that make you you. 
And that's such an important thing, boys and girls. You don't ever want to copy other people to be like them. You need to be just who you are because you are wonderful and special just the way you are. And that was what the message was that Peggy Rathman, the author, was trying to get you to understand. Now, speaking of being unique and special, we are going to do our memory book page that goes along with Ruby the Copycat. So go grab your memory book. And we are going to skip ahead and do the page on um, I am unique. This is the page that goes with Ruby the copycat. And that's why we read that story first. So you are going to write your full name. So your first name and your last name. And if you want to include your middle name, that'd be great. Something that makes me special is think about yourself. What special qualities do you have that make you you? And write those down. If Ruby was in my class, she would want to copy how I think about yourself. What would other kids want to copy about you? Remember, they all wanted to copy Ruby and how she hopped. Maybe they want to copy you with how you dress or how you draw or how you sing or how you kick a ball or whatever it is. I love being who I am because why do you love to be you? Every one of you is special and unique. So every one of you has something to write there. And then here's a picture of wonderful me. So I hope you use crayons. I hope you do a nice job on your picture because this is something that I hope, this memory book is something that you save forever and forever and ever. And so do a really nice job, do your best work, just like if you were in school, okay? So use your crayons, make a great picture. And then on Seesaw today, there is an activity that I would love for you to take a picture of your memory book page and upload it so that I can see your wonderful page because I'm missing seeing all your memory book pages, but at least on Seesaw, then I get to see that. So please do that today. And that's your assignment for reading, okay? So for math today, we are going to do um, lesson six, the very first part of it, guided practice page, and it's on telling time a.m. and p.m. So if you need to stop the video right now, go ahead and get your math packet and a pencil. And we just have a really easy assignment today. So we're almost done. All right, boys and girls, hopefully you have your math packet. You just needed lesson six and only page 625 and 626 today. So we're just gonna do the beginning part of the lesson and tomorrow you will finish the lesson. Remember last week we did lesson five, telling time to the five minute. So that was a little difficult. That was probably the hardest one yet in this chapter. And we had to go through it kind of quickly all in the same day. But we're gonna do some examples where we just practice telling time to the five minute. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a time on my clock and I'm gonna ask you to tell what time it is. So here's my clock. And if we were telling time to the five minute, remember first you look at the hour hand and it's pointing to this number. And then you look at the minute hand and you start at the 12 and you count by five. So five, 10. So hopefully you knew that the time was five, 10. Okay, so I'm gonna do another one. And what time do you think the clock says now? Remember, look at the hour hand first. It's the red one, the short hand. And then look at the blue one. So if you said 725, you would be correct. Okay, good job. So the hour hand is right after the seven. You always say the earlier one if it's in the middle of two. And then the minute hand, you'd start at the 12 and you'd count five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, let's do another one. And this one, I'm gonna make it like this. So hopefully you know when the minute hand's on the nine that that is quarter to something. And it's also, look at the minute or the hour hand first between the one and the two, you're going to pick the one. So one, and then let's count with the minute hands on. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So if you said 145, you were correct. All right, we're just going to keep practicing those. And those are something that you might need to practice at home too, because it's hard to tell time to the five minute compared to just the hour. Today we're going to talk about AM and PM. And as you can see, A period, M period, 
P period, M period, those are abbreviations, okay? And they're abbreviations for Latin words. So the abbreviation for AM means in Latin, anti-meridium. And PM is post-meridium. And those are Latin words. And what they really mean, I've told you before, AM means at morning or before noon. And PM means past morning or after noon. Okay, we're kind of getting all these languages in here, aren't we? Last week we had the French word pourquoi, which meant why, right? This, today we're doing Latin words. My goodness, we're going to be just super smart when this is all over with distance learning, aren't we? All right, so AM and PM. And AM are the hours. Mrs. Mickelson always says always morning. I say at morning. But um, those AM hours are before noon. And you know that in our daytime, we have to go around two times, 24 hours. So once this goes all the way around and it moves, I wish I had my big teacher clock that would fit under here, then it would be noon. So it starts at midnight. Our day starts at midnight or 12.01. And those first 12 hours are from midnight to noon. Those are a.m. hours. And then it goes to noon and it goes around again all the way and it turns into p.m. at noon and it goes from no from noon to midnight are our p.m. hours, okay? So sometimes people think of a.m. and p.m. as morning and night, but that's not really quite right. What we should think of it instead as is that a.m. is midnight until noon and p.m. is from noon until midnight. So in our math and our world today, we're going to think of things that you during, do during the day and at night. And I'm not going to draw pictures even though it tells us to. We're just going to write down a couple things that we do during the day and during the night. So during the day, we go to school, right? That's during the day, okay? We um, eat lunch. That's usually during the day, isn't it? Okay? And maybe we even eat breakfast, that's during the day. And at night, we um, go to bed. Okay, maybe we watch TV. And maybe we eat dinner. Those are some things that we might do during the day and at night. Okay, we just did that really fast. All right, on the back, it says, the hours from midnight until noon are labeled a.m., the hours from noon until midnight are labeled p.m. And helpful hint, 12 o'clock p.m. is called noon. And that's when we usually eat lunch. That's when we would go to lunch every day. 12 o'clock a.m. is midnight. And oftentimes on New Year's Eve, we stay up until midnight. And at midnight, it turns into the new year on New Year's Eve, doesn't it? When the ball drops, right? All right, so here are some things that we do during the a.m. We go to school. Hey, we said that. And this is a picture of 8 o'clock a.m. And kids are going on the bus to school. And then at night for 8 o'clock p.m., you could maybe be reading a bedtime story. All right, so your job today is really easy. You just need to tell what time is shown for the activity and write the time. And then you need to just circle a.m., or p.m. So in art class, it's 10 o'clock. So if you were in art class, you'd be in school. So I want you to circle whether that'd be a.m. or p.m. and then write the time. Ah, I just told you what the time was. Number two, look at the clock. You're going to go to bed. Write the time on the clock, a.m. or p.m. What do you do when you go to bed? Is that a.m. or p.m.? Play after school. Write the time. And would that be a.m. or p.m.? And how can you remember if it is a.m. or p.m.? And hopefully you can go back and listen to the video and you'll be able to figure that out. So that's all you have to do for math today. Enjoy your day. And I'm looking forward to seeing your cool memory book pages on Seesaw. And I will be back with you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, second grade. Bye.